Welcome back to our Voice of the Voter conversations with the candidates in Maine's 2nd Congressional District. Representative Jared Golden declined our invitation for an in-person or virtual face-to-face -face with his Republican opponent, Dale Crafts, so we spoke with each man individually, and here's our talk with Democrat Jared Golden. Uh, Congressman, thanks for being with us. Uh, let me ask you first about the, uh, the current COVID-19 situation and the leadership from the federal government. Uh, what are your thoughts on how well the administration has done here and what should Congress be doing if there's any slack to pick up? Well, uh, the administration and Congress should be working together. Uh, that's, I think, the key point. Um, so, uh, you know, early on, I think things started out uh, pretty good with passage of the CARES Act. Yeah. Uh, let's people, talk first, though, about the safety aspect, the, the, the idea that let's keep people healthy and safe. Yeah, well, I think what matters is the dissemination of the most accurate information that you have. When you're learning about a new novel virus, uh, something which I actually used to cover and talk about when I worked for Senator Collins on the Senate Homeland Security Committee, uh, you're going to be learning as you go. Uh, so as you get the most up-to-date information, you got to get that information out to the American people, uh, as well as to doctors uh, and, and nurses and the people who are uh, trying to take care of people on, on the front line. So I think that is one of the most important things. And I'd say that, unfortunately, uh, much of the news and information about this virus has been politicized. As, as we record this right now, we don't know if anything is going to be done in the next few weeks on pandemic relief. So we'll kind of leave that aside. But well, I, uh, on, on that point, okay, I, sure. I, I just got to say, I'm, yeah. I'm so terribly disappointed. And I don't agree uh, with either the president or Speaker Pelosi or Mitch McConnell that this can wait. Congress needs to act on this. Uh, if they can't find agreement uh, right now, it doesn't mean they should walk away from the table. The country cannot wait until next winter, uh, the end of 2020 or early 2021, uh, to take the next steps, whether that be vaccine development uh, and investments, more money for testing, more assistance for businesses, for people who are unemployed, for our hospitals. The list goes on and on. And the idea that we're just gonna set these talks aside uh, until after the election, and do we really expect that to happen after the lame, in the lame duck session? I don't. Uh, I've been pushing very hard on this. Uh, and frankly, I think all three of them have failed the country in this regard. Well, let's talk a little bit about police reform. Uh, the, the, ex the expression defund the police gets thrown around and you've, you've certainly pushed back on that. But are there things you think Congress needs to do either in terms of changing the way police are trained or the, the, the equipment that the federal government gives them money to buy, for example? Uh, I think that uh, one of the key points is if you want additional training, that takes resources. Uh, so that's a, that is an argument that runs counter to the concept of defund the police. Better training uh, means you know, better, better prepared police officers and forces means more resources, not less. Uh, and I agree w w with that fully. Uh, look at what we're doing here in Maine. Uh, there are some proactive steps that they've already taken in advance of 2020. Uh, banning chokeholds unless deadly force is authorized. That would be a proactive step uh, that we could take across this country. Um, you know, essentially uh, saying that this is not a, this is a potentially lethal and, and dangerous technique that shouldn't be used unless you're already in a lethal force, force situation where essentially a police officer is looking at their own safety uh, and, and protecting their own lives, which they have every right to do uh, when they're on, on the job. Uh, I think that uh, having some kind of database system where if we have uh, a police officer with a record of uh, you know, misconduct, uh, that we should be able to share that uh, across borders and across states uh, so that people that are, you know, have a, a bad pattern, uh, you know, a pattern of a bad, uh, you know, conduct uh, and a bad record can't just move to a different state and get hired, which is something we've seen. Um, you know, the vast, vast majority of our police officers are good men and women who want to serve their community, protect their community, uh, you know, implement the laws the way that they're supposed to be. Uh, but every one of them also says that accountability for uh, bad cops uh, is critically important, and that is one great way that we could accomplish that. Uh, let's talk about student loan debt. It's a real burden for a lot of Mainers, a lot of Americans. Uh, some have talked about the idea of forgiving student loan debt. Is that a good idea? Uh, across the board, I don't think so. Uh, I don't know that that's the best investment that the country could uh, make. 
Uh, first of all, I think we got to reconsider uh, the current culture of uh, you know, almost educating kids that college is the only pathway forward to success. As I have gotten to know the second district better and better over the course of the last three or four years, uh, I would say that many of the best paying jobs with the best retirement and health care benefits actually don't necessarily require a four year college education, but rather uh, specialized uh, training, perhaps some you know, additional education beyond uh, the high school diploma. And yet, for the most part, I think the message remains in, in the school right now uh, for high school age kids is that you have to make that four year degree investment, which continues to get more and more expensive. You know, I, I understand, uh, I think, the positive side of not carrying uh, college debt. Mm -hmm. I served the country in the Marines in Afghanistan and Iraq, and as a result, I had education funding available to me. Uh, not having that student debt uh, has really allowed me to pursue different courses uh, you know, in life or avenues in life without thinking about Should that. something like that be available if you do some other kind of public service, oh, AmeriCorps yeah. or something like that? Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm a part of a, a caucus called Four Country, the Four Country Caucus. Um, uh, it's an um, you know, offshoot of a group called With Honor. These are all veterans, mostly of Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, almost equally split between Democrats and Republicans. And w one of our top goals is to increase public service, not just in uh, service in the military, but in things like AmeriCorps, Job Corps, uh, the Peace Corps. And one of the key things we've talked about is how do we get more individuals to choose this path early in life, and one of them certainly is a return. You give something to the country and to our communities, you get something back. Uh, and education, uh, you know, investment is a great, I think, return for that. Everyone gets a little bit of something. The, um, the question of uh, guns or gun violence is always a, a, a big one. What, if anything, do you think Congress could or should do to address the problem of gun violence as opposed to, say, gun control? I think one of the first things that we should have a real conversation about is what are the emerging technologies in the world that are driving divisiveness, politicization, uh, and uh, pulling this society apart, putting people into corners with anxiety levels that are rising so high? Let's have a real conversation about social media uh, and what people are being driven to view and what kind of bubble and world that they are existing in. It cannot be a coincidence uh, that we've seen this rise in uh, you know, mass shootings, school shootings and other things at the same time that we see this rise in technology platforms uh, that are being dominated in some really concerning uh, you know, ways. Um, go, go look at the, the, the Social Dilemma as an example mm -hmm. uh, of that, a documentary about this. Um, let's take the laws we have and really invest in them. Across the country, uh, the background check system is under-resourced. Uh, understaffed uh, and not necessarily, you know, one silo not speaking to the other. Uh, that is one great way I think that, that we can keep all firearms out of the hands of a few bad actors, felons, uh, dangerous in individuals, people sh you know, who should not mentally be in possession of a dangerous tool. Uh, but it, that is not the same thing as saying let's ban one specific uh, type of firearm from all, all individuals. What's your top priority that you think could get accomplished in the next Congress about addressing climate change? I think we got to continue to uh, speak uh, to what our priorities are uh, as, as a country. Uh, up in um, Washington County, there's uh, a developing potential for offshore uh, tidal power generation. Uh, that's taken a lot of investment in partnerships, public-private uh, partnerships between a, you know, a private company in the University of Maine and with you know, help from government funding. Uh, we got to test that out now, but if it works, then we got to take it to the next step, commercialize it, be able to manufacture it. Hopefully here in the United States, we have to be able to connect that into uh, an old grid that really needs to be reinvested in. Uh, like those types of little detailed you know, investments in new types of cleaner energy that will help us get off fossil fuels is where government, I think, needs to stay focused. Um, investing in that laboratory that is our universities uh, and partnering with states uh, in the private sector to make these things affordable 
and so that we can scale them up is how we're going to get there. But at the end of the day, we have to be able to deliver the en energy when it's needed. Uh, we can't put jobs at, at risk. We have to be able to prove that the technology works and works broadly to meet all of, of the needs of our entire society. So that's, that's just one of many things. But with something like climate change, that's a big problem. There's not going to be one easy answer. And after the break, we will wrap up our Voice of the Voter conversations with the candidates with their closing statements.